So number three on this list, I kind of disagree with simply because it sounds hmm. wrong to hmm. imply that Thrones can't stand on its own merits, but I digress. Number three, the series was not as dark or mature as it claimed to be. One of Game of Thrones' selling point was that it was the grown-up answer to idealistic high fantasies like The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Westeros' saga could be read as Martin's deconstruction of such stories, especially since he made his misgivings with J.R.R. Tolkien's epic public. However, Game of Thrones ended up dark, not mature. In truth, Game of Thrones was just the Lord of the Rings with an R rating. Westeros had more blood, profanity, and sex than Middle-earth ever had, but it never went beyond being an edgy fantasy. The series rushing out a jarring, saccharine ending is only more proof of its lack of commitment to its supposed maturity. I disagree with this point from the article, mainly because it's kind of an unfair thing to compare the two. Like, even though it's a common comparison that happens all the time, Thrones has enough going for it to stand on its own two feet. You know, like, other fantasy series kind of rely on The Lord of the Rings to keep fans familiar with, like, world-building other elements. Because if you've read or seen Lord of the Rings, you kind of, you know, a lot of the new fantasy stuff, you're kind of familiar with what's going on. Orcs, elves, all that stuff. But George doesn't really do that. Saying Lord, uh, saying Game of Thrones is an edgy Lord of the Rings is like saying Dune is an edgy Star Trek. Not, no, not really. And before we continue on, I do want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. It's a fantastic dark fantasy RPG that brings true console gaming experience to your PC and mobile device. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on crazy bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions, you can build and level up your dream team to raid your way. Right now I'm smashing through everybody with the Royal Guard character who acts as my wrecking ball, but the Sky Touch Shaman is at the heart of my team who helps debuffs all the enemies to make every fight that much easier. This month is Raid's third year anniversary and one of the ways they're celebrating the milestone is with all new champion skins that let you customize a champion's appearance to something that suits your style and preference. Personally, I like the Dark Fallen for Arbiter the most. You just can't go wrong with black and red. Raid also wants to celebrate the three years of gaming with you by giving out special gifts and ultra rare rewards. There's never been a better time to get started and if you use my link or scan the QR code, all new players will get a free starter pack worth almost $40 to kickstart their game with champions Miser Cord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, plus 10 Magic, Force, and Spirit XP brews. You can find these rewards in your inbox once you load in, but they'll only be available for the next 30 days, so be sure to download Raid Shadow Legends and claim your free starter pack and join in on the action today. Here, here, here's, here's, here's the problem: is is that um, Game of Th like A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones are released at different times. And so, and so the fantasy world is in two different places at those two different times. So it is true that when Lord of the Rings, the books are published, high fantasy has a kind of idealized, like fun, adventurous kind of attitude. And then there is a shift. There is a movement that Game of Thrones is very much part of, but, but, um, but Wheel of Time is, is part of this movement as well. Um, of moving from like good, clean, uh, high fantasy, swashbuckling adventure fun to like dark, gritty realism, um, and that and that Game of Thrones is that dark, gritty real realism, and so it's like revolutionary, you know, in 1996. The problem is is that Lord of the Rings movies come out after 1996, and they are much darker than Lord of the Rings books, and so you like you're. You're already on this like transition to dark um, that, you know, that's appearing. So like when Game of Thrones comes out, uh, I would say it's still pretty freaking dark compared to compared to fantasy. But it's part of this like transition. Um, and so it's, it's not really contrasted to I would say that Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones, the show and Lord of the Rings, the movies are not as different as A Song of Ice and Fire, the books is to Lord of the Rings. Does, does that all make sense? Yes, it does. And I, like, I, I just don't agree with this point because I don't think any show that yeah. came out back then and even in the 2000s was trying to be edgy. I just think it was trying to be on HBO. Well, first of all, anything you're going to put on HBO, it comes off like HBO. Exactly. Right? There's, there's got to be tits and violence in, in, in every HBO show. So that's honestly, 
that that's kind of where we are on in television right now. You're either getting something, uh, you're either getting HBO or you're getting CW. Yeah, and and along the way, there are some things in between. You know, that's a that's a, that's a perfect that's a perfect example because because you're right that CW still has that kind of like adventurous, um, clean kind of like feel to everything. Right, where every character is like a fucking supermodel, and then you yeah. do have some stuff in between, like the I'm watching right now. Uh, the Halo show, and mm. un- unfortunately, I am. And and the Halo show, or even uh, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop, it's somewhere between yeah. HBO and CW. Because yes, you have some see some ass and some violence, mm. but it but it's still like a high fly adventure where you know all the characters are supermodel, good looking, and you know the stakes aren't really that high, and there's still plot armor there. So it's in the middle, but. I, like yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly. I think it. I think it's not. I think the series was not as dark or mature as it claimed to be. I don't think it claimed to be anything. I just claimed it. If anything, it claimed to be on HBO, and it fucking. <laughs> that's, that's that's the thing, right? Yeah. It's... Um, I mean that's the que- that's the thing is is it as revolutionary as people think it is? And it's like, I don't know. I mean, I think in, in some ways it was just lucky. It just it became the pop cultural thing that everybody decided to focus on right Preston you you have no idea the luck involved in the make like I I don't know if you've read that making of the the show book yet but the luck of everything involved in making season one that is lightning in the bottle yeah, there's lightning in a bottle holy because you're talking shit. about a bunch of unknown actors on that with a fit with a that had a really crappy pilot with showrunners that, who like didn't have the who, best reputation right if at all who, at all you know X Men Origins Wolverines, right? Wolverine, with a with a with a writer who um, was kind of a, a wash up, right? You know, before game before Ice and Fire, like who 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 also did not have the best record, you know. Um, that is true. George R. R. What, what was besides Beauty and the Beast? What else did he have have involved with? Fail. Um, I mean, he just so in Hollywood, he just did Beauty and the Beast, and he did some episodes of the twilight zone and outer limits <clears throat> he did he didn't do that that much in hollywood actually but then before that his writing career had failed he was this he was this really you know up and coming uh you know sci-fi writer who won all these awards and then he put out the armageddon rag and it didn't really do that great it didn't do well at all and um even fever dream like was only kind of only a lukewarm success and then armageddon rag was just bombed and so he, he thought his writing career was over or at least his novel writing career was over so i mean you think you know he's doing he's doing these like kind of shit shows in hollywood and wild cards you know like that's his life and so it's a good thing game you know a song of ice and fire like you know was uh became the sleeper hit and then was picked up with game of thrones 